Well, hello, and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories. Wise tales from storytellers around the world, which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim, and I love stories. Hello, Super Great Kids, and how are you? I'm very happy because I've been practising songs to sing for our summer show and singing always makes me happy. And we have a story about a giant this week and for some reason I really like giants. Maybe that's because I'm not very tall? It's a Viking story today, a Norse myth from Northern Europe about a competition between red-bearded Thor, the Thunder God, and a ginormous stone giant. In their frightening world, the gods and giants often compete with each other. And in this story, Thor travels to the land of the giants to ask a favour from a giant far taller than himself. Thor is one brave god. Maybe that's why they call him the God of Thunder. The storyteller is the talented Jason Buck, who creates the genius voice of the devil in The Luck Child and all those funny voices and animal sounds in The Old Woman and Her Pig. Jason actually looks a bit like a Viking. He's as tall as I am small, so just imagine the sort of booming voice he's going to give the stone giant. This story is a smidge scary, but not very, so find a grown-up whose hand you can hold and enjoy. Oh, and just before we hear from Jason, I've got a question for you. How many stories can you think of which have giants in them? It might be a bit tricky, so I'll give you some clues. Well, there's an Irish giant, and there's a giant from the Caribbean who's got two heads. Ooh, and there's a giant from England who owns a chicken which lays golden eggs. And a giant from a story in the US who swallows coyote. And two giants from the US who like to whistle and a giant from the Philippines who is defeated by five very small friends. See how many of those stories you can remember while we have a quick word with the grown-ups. Ready? Off you go. Super great live on the internet. We're bringing you our Kim and Kate Cockery, telling their stories. We're telling them online. Tune in and watch them shine. So come along and join us if you can. That was fun. Uh, when is this show, Kim? Saturday, July the twentieth, David. And where do people get tickets and information? From our website, supergreatkidsstories.com. Huzzah. See you there. Bye. Hello, Super Great Kids. I'm back. How many giants did you think of? The Irish giant was Finn McCool. And the giant from the Caribbean is Jack and the Two-Headed Giant. And the one from England who owns a chicken is from Jack and the Beanstalk. And the giants from the US include Coyote and the Giant and the Whistling Giants from How the Mosquito Became. And then from the Philippines, there's Odon the Giant, who's defeated by a sunbird, a mosquito, a knit, a crab and a snake. Remember that one? I think that makes six giant stories, and there are others. Hands up if you got three or more. Ooh, very well done. And now, are you holding the hand of a grown-up? It's time to give a very warm welcome to storyteller Jason Buck. 
Hello, super great kids. It's me, Jason Buck, storyteller, here again. You might have heard some of my other stories before with lots of sounds and silly sound effects in them. Well, this one has got plenty of silly sounds and silly sound effects in it, but I'm going to tell you it from the beginning. The gods of the Vikings, the gods of the Norse, as they're known, were going to have a feast. And when they feast, they eat and drink for hours and days on end. They wanted something special to drink and decided that they would brew a special mead. Mead is a delicious honey drink that is drunk by the gods of Asgard, the gods of the Vikings. But as there were going to be so many at the feast, they decided they would need an enormous cauldron, an enormous pot for brewing this special drink in. Now they knew that the biggest cauldron that could be got was owned by the giant called Hymir. And as he was large and fierce, and as the pot itself was so enormous, some even said that it was five miles deep. As it was so huge and so enormous, only the thunder god Thor was big enough and strong enough to bring it back. Off Thor went. He travelled out of Asgard, where the gods lived, over the Rainbow Bridge, Bifrost, down onto Midgard, where the mortals live, the normal human beings, like you, like me, and he made his way to the land of the giants. When he was there, he trudged along the barren landscapes, endless rock and mountains, until he found a hall. A hall is a word that they used to use for great solid wooden houses, a place where a giant would live. Ymir. Ymir was a big giant, and not only was he massive and strong, but he was made of stone. His skin was stone, his head was stone, his arms, his hands, his feet, his body, everything was made of stone, but still he walked and still he talked. And when Thor arrived at Ymir's house, Ymir's wife was there to welcome him. Come on in, love, come on in, she said. Come on in, sit down. Have a lovely, have a lovely cup. There we go. A nice refreshing drink from your journey all the way from Asgard here. And Thor sat down. Thank you very much. Thank you indeed. He turned and looked around the hall. The hall was vast. Its walls were made from whole tree trunks. And in the distance, he could see... Down in the shadows, far at the back end of this building, there was a huge cauldron, a vast pot, and that must be the one that he was sent to find. Well, my husband will be home soon, said Ymir's wife, but don't you worry, you'll have a nice dinner tonight and you can talk business with him afterwards. As Thor sat there, looking down at the shadows at the other end of the room and gazing at that vast pot, wondering if he could indeed lift up such a great thing, then the earth began to shake beneath him. The cup in front of him began to shake on the table. The very walls of the hall he sat in began to shiver and shake themselves. The rafters in the roof, they began to shake and dust fell down. Oh, here he comes now, said Ymir's wife. And in through the door, crouching down to get underneath the doorway, came a vast figure of a man. But as you've already guessed, this was no ordinary man. It was Hymir, the stone giant. In he came, and he looked down at his table, and there, to him, was this funny little man sitting on one of his great big chairs. Who is this sitting in my house? Oh, hello, darling, said Ymir's wife. Oh, this is, uh, this is Thor. You remember him? He's the Thunder God, son of Odin. He's come down from Asgard. Now, he wants to talk to you about something, but as he's a visitor, as you know, we must offer him some hospitality. We must offer him a bit of food and a bit of drink before you two sit down and talk business. Now, back in those days, the rules were that if you had a guest in your house, you must look after them. If they were there to spend the night, you must try to make them as comfortable as possible, and if they were there to eat and drink, you would give them the best food that you had available. Very well, said Ymir, and sat down. <laughs> A thunderous crash, and the table jumped in front of Thor. But Thor, 
Tiny though he was compared to Humir, he was brave and fearless and stared up, and the two locked eyes across the table. What is it that you want from me? said Humir. Me? I want to borrow your enormous cauldron. We shall see. But first, let us eat. Well, as Humir had been out working all day, doing what giants do in giant jobs, his wife had been at home and she'd been cooking the supper. She'd cooked an enormous plate of roast beef for them. But as soon as she'd set it out and her husband Humir tucked in and their guest Thor tucked in, Thor <laughs> finished his in a moment. So she went and got some more. And even though Umir hadn't finished his plate yet, Thor <laughs> ah, finished his up straight away. And so it kept on going. As Umir sat and he munched his way through and he tried to eat faster so that he could keep up with as much as Thor was eating, Thor ate more and more and more. <laughs> ah. He didn't just eat one plate, not two plates, not five, not ten plates, not even a whole oxen. An oxen is basically like a cow or a bull. Big, four legs, stands in a field and goes, mmm. Not only did he eat one whole oxen, but they went through another. Two, two whole oxen, which should be enough to feed a whole town for a week. Humir was not impressed. You have eaten my two favourite oxen. I was keeping those to sell at market, and now they are gone. I am infuriated. I am Thor, said Thor, and the two of them stood up, and even though Thor only reached up to Humir's knees, they both stared at each other, one looking up and one looking down, both furious and their eyes beginning to glow, until the sensible one, Humir's wife, stepped in between them before a fight or a battle could start. Now, 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 go on now, gentlemen, listen to this. Stop your arguing. Very well, Thor's come here for something, and, and husband, you're not very happy about how much he's eaten. I suggest, instead of fighting, instead of having a battle, the two of you have a competition. Very well. What sort of competition? Well, I think, as we've run out of food as well, the two of you could go out tomorrow in a fishing boat and see who could get the biggest fish. Whoever gets the biggest fish will win. If Thor wins, he can borrow the cauldron, and if you win, darling, then he goes straight home without a cauldron. Very well. Very well, said Thor. And so the next morning, Ymir went down and pushed his fishing boat out, out onto the waves, and Thor hopped in, and the two of them began to row. They set their oars into the water and pulled and pulled and travelled up and down over the gunmetal grey waves, over that ocean, until it got deeper and deeper and deeper. And then they reached the place where Ymir normally did his fishing. We stop here so I can fish. And he took a great net and flung it out, and within a few minutes he hauled it back in. But it wasn't fish that he'd caught. He'd caught two huge whales. Now in those days, and in that part of the world, people used to catch whales to eat. They would only take what they needed just to feed themselves and their families. And Humir had caught two big whales. But Thor had yet to catch anything. Now he rowed out further and further and deeper and deeper, away from the land and further out to sea, so that Umir began to get worried. Um, uh, oh, well, getting very, very deep here, Thor. Um, we must be careful, because deep in this water is Jormungandr. Jormungandr was the world serpent. A serpent-like dragon who was so vast that its body curled all the way around the world beneath the waves. It was so long that its body curled all the way around and its tail stuck into its mouth. I'm not afraid, said Thor, and it's time to fish. And he took out a huge hook with a huge lump of bait on the end, a big piece of meat, and a long rope, and he dropped the big hook down into the water and down... Down, down, down it went, and he stood there, holding the rope, and he waited. He didn't have to wait long, before suddenly there was a violent jerk and a tug on the rope, and the boat wobbled so violently from side to side that it shipped water over the edges, 
and the giant Humir began to get worried that the boat would sink and sink this far from land and he, a giant of stone, would not be able to get home. But Thor pulled on the rope and he pulled and heaved and dragged with all his might. Up, up came the rope. Meter after meter, yard after yard, he pulled and heaved and dragged on the rope until eventually up came the hook and attached to the hook. There, rolling its great fearsome eyes, gnashing its great fearsome teeth, and hissing and snarling in fury, there was the head of Jormungandr, the world serpent. It had taken the bait and the hook was in its mouth, and Thor was beginning to pull this huge sea serpent out of the water. Stop! Stop! said Umir. Stop! It is too big! It will upset the boat! It is too big! You have won! You have won! And with that, the giant pulled out his knife and cut the rope, so that Jormungandr, with a great rearing of its head, splashed back down into the ocean and sank down, down, down to the dark depths. Now Thor, the thunder god, had won, and Hymir had two great big whales with which to replace the meat that Thor had eaten. And between the two of them, they rowed back to land, and Thor, taking the huge cauldron on his shoulders, was allowed to borrow it to take back to Asgard so that the gods could brew the golden mead ready for their feast. But Hymir, he took the whales back to his house, and he <coughs> munched <coughs> and crunched the whale meat, and Thor took the cauldron and he and the other gods brewed the delicious golden honey mead, and between them... <laughs> oh, they had plenty. <laughs> to pour out, to guzzle down. <laughs> and the feast was spectacular. Thank you so much, Jason, for sharing that story. My favourite part is when the giant's wife steps in and stops them fighting and suggests they have a competition instead. Good idea. And my favourite sound effect is when they're pouring out the honey mead and it sort of goes... Only I can't do that sound like Jason can. Which is your favourite moment in the story? And your favourite sound effect? Maybe you could tell your grown-up and see if they have the same ideas. I wonder if you could draw a picture of what Thor looks like in your head. Or even what you think of when you imagine that sea monster wrapping itself around the entire underwater world with its tail in its mouth. Send those pictures to us via our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash supergreatkidsstories. Or via our website, supergreatkidsstories.com. Now, it's time to say hello to some owlets who've recently swooped into our nest. Ooh, 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 ooh. To Owlet Sophia, who is six and a half and is from Hillsborough in North Carolina in the US. Sophia just finished kindergarten and she also became a big sister to her baby brother Johan. She also has a little sister Nora and their favourite story is River Mama. And Sophia has become a very brave listener to all of the super great scary stories. Well done, Sophia. And next, let's go to Seattle in Washington to say hello to Raji, who is four. Her favourite stories are East of the Sun, West of the Moon, Little Half Chick and Jack and the Two-Headed Giant. Raji enjoys listening to the stories in the car on the way to school. And over to DeWitt in Michigan in the US to say hello to Diane, who's just turned seven. Diane asked if she and her brother Wilder, who is five, could join the Owlets Club for her birthday. Oh, that's kind of you, Diane. They both listen every night and they love Cap of Rushes and Misery. Diane's personal favourite is the Snake Sister. 
now that they're owlets, they're looking forward to listening to some of the scary stories too. And let's head west to superfans in Salt Lake City in Utah in the US to say hello to owlets Esther, who is nine, Sylvia, who is six, and Jessie, who is three. They've been enjoying the stories for a couple of years now, and some of the little sayings have snuck into the family vocabulary. Esther's favourite story is A Nancy and the Birds, and Sylvia's is The Parrot's Advice, and Jessie loves The Three Little Pigs. Welcome to the club. And let's fly north next to say hello to seven-year-old Chippy, who lives in Haida Gwaii, a string of islands off the northwest coast of British Columbia in Canada. It's an area I hadn't heard of before. It looks incredibly beautiful. Lucky you, Chippy. And off now to another island further down the Pacific coast, in the US this time, to say hello to seven-year-old Ziggy, who lives in Bainbridge Island and is lucky enough to regularly spend time in New Orleans. Ziggy loves the Nancy stories and says that she's discovered a statue of a Nancy in the Storyland Museum in New Orleans. Well, that sounds pretty darn cool. Well done for finding that, Ziggy. Let's fly east now to another island, this time in Europe, to Gibraltar off the coast of Spain, to say hello to Owlets, Summer, who recently turned eight, and Nathan, who is nearly six. Nathan and Summer's parents are from Ireland, but the children have always lived in Gibraltar, so they enjoy listening to Irish stories by Kate Corkery. Me too. And they're looking forward to watching Kate telling stories in the show this weekend. Summer's favourite stories are Eggshell Soup and Finn McCool, while Nathan loves The Ghost of the Bloody Finger and The Hairy Toe. They both love Mama Dragger. See you at the show on Saturday. The wonders of the internet which can bring us all a little closer. And off to sunny South Africa now, to Langerbarn in the Western Cape, to say hello to Owlet Sophia, who is four. Sophia loves the Nancy stories, and her favourite one is A Nancy and the Magic Pot. And her baby sister Indy also enjoys listening to the stories with Sophia. <laughs> Welcome to the club. That's it for Owlet Hellos this week. More next week. So many good pictures are coming in at the moment. Our Pick of the Week pictures are a very imaginative drawing of the Rainbird by seven-year-old Morwen from Wiltshire in the UK. I love the fact that the bird is standing on a spotted toadstool. And I like the little rainbow badge on the bird's chest too. And we had a monster story from Japan last week and I asked you to send in pictures of your favourite monster. Camille from Pennsylvania in the US has drawn an orange love monster which is holding a cookie in its hand. Good idea, Camille. I wonder if your monster would share a cookie with your brother Calvin who also likes listening to the stories. What do you think? If you'd like to see these super great pics and lots more, go to facebook.com forward slash super great kids stories. And thanks very much to all of you who are subscribing to our podcast. If you'd like to support us on Apple Podcasts or on Patreon, we'll say hello to you on the programme. You can hear our stories advert free and you'll get access to our Super Great Kids Stories Express, which are almost pure stories with a lot less of the Kim babble. And you'll have access to 40 bonus stories and at least 24 super great scary stories. For more information about subscribing, go to our website at supergreatkidsstories.com. That's nearly it. Kate Corkery and I are looking forward to our online summer show this Saturday, July the 20th. It's at 5.30 UK time. 
and it's at 9.30 on the west coast of the US and 12.30 on the east coast of the US. We really look forward to seeing you there and hopefully chatting afterwards. Happy holidays! This podcast was produced at Wardour Studios in fabulous Fitzrovia in London.